Oh. Oh. Wait. No, no. Get in there. No, 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 no. Get in your side. No. No. Over here. That's your spot. You want to have an understanding about this. Ah.
Well, hello, Sandy. Hey there, how are you? Hey there, how are you? I'm okay, thank you, and you? Doing all righty. Yeah. Sam, you get water all over the floor, buddy. You won't mess a dog, you know that, pal? Let's see how many folks show up here this morning. Changed up the regular time from 2.30 to 10.30. And I don't know that that has been well received yet. But it's kind of what I got to do. The temperatures here are very say, hot. So. What, what is it today out there? We're forecasting it to go up to... Uh, 105. Oh. And I have air conditioning in the camper, but it only, uh, when it gets that hot out, it, it gets up to the 90s inside here. Um, Hello, Steve. Hey, Barbara. How's it going? Good. How are you this morning? Uh, I'm excellent, thing. All right. <laughs> uh, I did a long meditation, 40 minutes. 40 so minutes? Was, yeah, 30 to 40. Yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty long, intense meditation. Yeah, like sometimes I just get carried away and then it's so nice, so I just like take an extra 10 minutes or 20, you know. Was it, uh, was it guided or did you just all by yourself? All by myself. Wow. That's... But, but that's I took something. actually uh, some meditation classes um, like 10 years ago with a guy yeah. that was a monk. So he taught me different techniques. All right. All right. So like we did meditation when walking, meditation with eyes open. Um, we did meditations with no mantras. So it's only breathing yeah. or meditation on compassion. Uh, you know, was there. Well, many styles, so it was really interesting and <clears throat> I would recommend it to anyone, actually. It's a game changer. Yeah. Uh, there's a dude named David D. D A V I D J I. Uh, pretty interesting guy. He was a sophomore in New York City when the Twin Towers went down. After that, he just walked away from business. And Went to work with uh, Deepak Chopra in California. He was the CEO, oh. and a student. And now he's a uh, pretty strong meditation teacher. He's got a book that, uh, that I learned so much from. And the guy has a really, really keen skill at breaking down the scientific details on you know, the western side of it, the eastern side yeah. of it. It's not boring. It's very accessible. Learned a lot from that guy. Can you write his name in the chat, please? Because the sound comes and goes. I don't know. I was just typing the same thing. You know what? <laughs> I'll do that. You know what? There's. If anybody wants to make a, throw a dollar in the basket, the donation link. And here is my meditation who I look at. Oh, David G. Right here. And uh, he's got a lot of books out there, but kind of his most known one is um, The Secrets of Meditation. But you can look him up and 
Spotify or whatever service you use for podcasts, five interviews with him. And uh, he's just, he's a beautiful human. Mm-hmm. Raj here, cool. All right, let's be a couple more minutes for people to show up. You may want to have some time. There's going to be some, some edgier things. Uh, I'm using three blocks, two larger ones. I got a smaller one. I don't have a bolster, so I use a smaller box with a little throw pillow. And that's, that's kind of like my makeshift bolster. So any kind of props that you feel you may have them handy so that uh, you can access them. We're going to be doing one, one uh, area where uh, legs up a wall will be an option. So if you have a wall close by and you're looking for the least sensational option in that moment, the legs up a wall, because you kind of be aware of that. No last minute, and we'll be here. Let's go, boom. Okay. So as I mentioned, you want to have your props available, accessible. That's probably a good idea, whatever you feel you might want to use. Blocks and straps and bolsters, oh my. Um, I'm going to try out some new things today, so I appreciate your patience with me. Uh, we're going to employ a system called the three track system. It's a, it's a method that, that a yin dude named Bernie Clark uses. And it's just, it's three tracks, track one, track two, track three. And you'll hear me talk about this in various poses, shapes. Track one, that's going to be probably the most accessible expression of a, of a pose. Uh, the probably the least sensation, the least edgy, uh, the easiest, if we're going to use those kind of words. Track two is uh, a little edgier, a little, a little more challenging, but still pretty accessible. And then track three is going to be, you know, a lot of sensation. Uh, might not be for everybody. There's, there's a number of track three poses that I personally don't go into. They don't work for me. So... You know, just like if we were doing a hot practice, a more uh, young style practice, more active, kind of flirt with these, you know. Uh, listen to your body and kind of check things out before making any big commitments. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, like track three, I'm going right into it and that's okay. Or maybe not. And then again, if you choose a, t a track three 
pose and you get into it for a minute or two and it just ain't right, man, go change up into two or one. You know, this is your practice. It works for you. You make the choices. You make the decisions. Um, I just offer suggestions like always. So let's, uh, let's get started here. We're going to begin in a standing position. You know, you can be at the top of your mat, facing the front of the room, side of the room, corner of the room, whatever. Just, just come to standing. Just a nice natural stance, you know, feet maybe about hips width. And a tall stance, you know, your hips are going to be over your knees. And your shoulders up over your hips. Just let your hands hang to the side. You know, we don't have to do the das and the palms forward, none of that. Just let your hands hang. This will even be. But let your shoulders drop away from your ear holes. Find a little, a little distance in that area, right? Start to feel your feet. Just, just ground into, into the planet that you're standing on. Maybe every exhale you have grounds you a little more. In the standing position, we begin to explore breath. In this type of practice, we, we use anapana, just natural breath. It just let it do what it does. But we'll have some awareness of it. You know, if it's short, let it be short. If it's deep, let it be deep. Maybe it moves through one nose hole, maybe through both nose holes. Maybe nose is plugged, got to use mouth. Whatever it is, it's cool. Just let it be. Let it do how it does. And if you're not dizzy, closing your eyes here is nice. And right here from the get-go, I encourage you to give yourself permission to be here however it is. I ain't asking you to leave anything at the door. You be here just however you are, whatever that is. That's cool, man. Just let it be. While you're standing, notice a little sway front to back, feeling the changes in your feet as your weight kind of moves forward a little. The heels are lighter. As your weight kind of moves back a little, toes and balls are a little lighter. We maybe go on to a side, weight into the right foot. You notice your left foot's a little lighter. Outside of your right foot kind of gets a little heavier. You take it over to the left. Same thing. Now the right foot's kind of light. Knife edge of your left foot is grounded. Yeah, that's sweet. And continue this natural sway. The body will do what it does. Just breathe. And let your body sway a little in this standing position. We'll go into a, a simple meditation on, on the body and mindfulness of the body. Now the Buddha, you know that guy, he sat under a tree for a while and then he told us a lot of things. He said, uh, the path to the unconditioned the unconditioned is just that mind state where, uh, where suffering has no purchase. He said to us, the path to the unconditioned, it lies through mindfulness of the body. Just bring your awareness to just the 
physical sensations you're feeling right now in the standing, slight swing. Breath will move natural. And if your mind wanders, it's all right. Just bring it back to the breath and then expand your awareness to physical sensations. Those will be our three focuses, breath, sensation of body, and finally sensation of emotion. The Buddha talked about there was one thing, one thing that deepens our practice, our consciousness equanimity, benevolent qualities, like humility, generosity, patience, tolerance, forgiveness. And the one thing is the mindfulness to the body, the physical body. Our mind again. I just put a slight bend in your knees, just a little bitty bend forward, nothing extreme with your hands on your thighs. Just let your toes open away from each other a little bit, open your feet a little bit. Now, for track three students, continue to fold forward bringing your chest towards your thighs, let your head be heavy, your neck be soft and long. Take a hold of your elbows and just hang here in dangling pose. Track two and track one students, bend your knees and squat down, bring your butt to the mat. Track three can continue to dangle, but track two and one come down to seated in a butterfly, bottoms of your feet together, knees falling away from each other. And let's make it a long leg butterfly, kind of like a diamond, heels away from the groin. For track two, just grab a hold of your feet, lengthen your breastbone away from your pubic bone. On the inhale, and just kind of bend your elbows, fold in, and drop your head. This is track two, fold it forward in a butterfly. For track one, legs stay in butterfly, just come to your back, recline in this butterfly. Supta Bhattakonasana, recline butterfly. For track three students, you can always, always change up and come out of that. We're gonna be here for a little while. So let's go through our three aspects of a yin pose. The first one is we come to the shape, finding our edge, that place between too much and not enough. Then we, we soften around that edge, that place where we're feeling the sensation. You can use exhales to soften around it and surrender to it, just dip into it and indulge. And third, slide into stillness, eliminating any, any unnecessary motion fidgets, and twitches, and wiggles. You know, we can clean our toenails later. Just be still. Breathing in this type of practice is a little different. It's natural and it's slower. 
gong practice, hatha, vinyasa, that sort. The breathing becomes faster. We need more air, more oxygen. Doing this, this sweet and still practice, the breath is a little slower, softer. We find the sensation of breath brushing our upper lip as it exits our nostrils. Mm. Find sensation of breath rushing past the back of our heart on its way to our belly as it enters. Mm. Washing out as it just effortlessly releases. your awareness go to physical sensations where are you feeling this right now just leave it at that where where am i feeling this Stay with your breath. Let it just kind of be a beacon to bring you back into your awareness of breath. It's always there. Uh, track free students, go ahead and join us in Butterfly at this time. Here. Dangling pose, just come on down. Butt to the mat, soles of your feet together, knees falling away from each other. right here in this in this place. If you're on your back Recline, butterfly, come up to seated. Let's all straighten our legs out in front of us. Seated upright. We'll just do some movement for a rebound here. Just move your knees. Drop toes left to right. Maybe rub thighs, knees a little bit. Just more of an active rebound. Maybe place your hands on the mat off to the side, a little bend in your knees, just some windshield wipers, but oh, a little outside of butt cheek there, it's nice. Just a few motions and a few movements. Ugh. Ugh. Moving right along. 
continuing to stay with our spine, flexion, track one students, or something a little, little lighter, just legs up a wall, bring yourself next to your wall, come to your back and just run your legs up that wall, making contact from butt bone to, to heel bone. And just leave your hands at your sides. Track two students, maybe take your bolster or cushion or block, put it just under your sit bones, elevate them just a little way, with legs out in front of us. Lift your breastbone, just kind of fold forward, bringing your chest up beyond your knees, letting gravity bring you into a caterpillar, a forward fold. You can just let your arms drape across the top of your toes or let them melt off of the sides of your shins, either way, whatever, just fold into this. Track three students, come to your back. Go into a pose called snail. We'll track three students on your back. Just bend your knees. Place your palms on the mat next to your hips. Use a little, little bit of core to push your knees up and over. Hips kind of over your chest. Bring in your feet towards the floor. They don't have to touch. And let's not confuse this with the hatha pose called plow. This is snail. It's more rounded. Let your knees bend. Maybe they come to your temples or ears. Let your back round. Just melt into this. Again, touch your three aspects. Find the pose, the edge. Soften around it. And then become still. Awareness to breath first. Has it changed in this new spot? Just observe breath and notice what it's doing. As we continue to bring mindfulness to our body, we'll expand our awareness into the physical sensation a little, a little deeper. Where is the sensation? Where are you feeling this right now? What is that sensation? The pressure of dullness, the stretch. Is it sharp and painful? If it's painful or sharp or tingling pain, you know, that's an indication to back off and come out. We're not looking for that. But if it's just achy, well, you're just dipping into the coatings of your bones, and that's all right. For snail, if you have uh, hypertension, high blood pressure, or deal with lightheadedness, hmm, be aware of that and perhaps make adjustments. That sensation, has it spread anywhere? Has it relocated to another area? 
with your eyes closed, if, if that sensation had a color, what would it be? The color of that sensation, what? What does it taste like? What is its flavor? Mm. Can you hear that sensation? Does it have a sound? We hit a point about right about now where we experience phase shift in the body. No longer only stretching muscles, but ligaments, tendon, fascia. It's called extracellular matrix. A funny little phenomenon as we dip into this important tissue mind kind of wants to get a little rowdy monkeys in the kitchen want to start breaking plates you know that's that's your your notification look at the breath understand that it's natural don't judge it just observe it and watch. Taking your time, no hurries, no worries, and moving non abrasively in the exit out of this pose, track three, you no know, rolling to your back. Track two, come flat to your back. Track one, you can exit the wall, and you also come to your back. Everybody flat on your back. Just like Savasana, corpse pose, just let the backside of your body melt into the mat and be still. This would be a, a static rebound, still. And while you're on your back, notice that place of sensation, what's going on right now. You feel it washing away, washing across the body, moving, maybe vibrating, or maybe steady. As you watch that, notice the change. You understand this is awareness of, of the intelligence of your body. You know, they, they call it chi, they call it prana. This part of the planet, they call it spirit. The subtle body it's just giving you an opportunity to witness it right now. Mm, it is sweet. Now, if you can reach for your cushion or your bolster or your padded block from where you're at right now, go ahead and take it. 
We're going to go into a bridge, but stay with me here. On your back, with your knees bent, your feet flat, we're going to go into a supported bridge. Just press into your feet, lifting your, your pelvis up off the mat. Place your bolster, your block, your pillow under the sacrum. Now check it out. Roll with me here. Once you set your your sacrum, your low back on that that support, straighten your legs and just let them let them be heavy. Heels on the mat, toes maybe fall away from each other. Now track one, students just. Arms down our sides, biceps kind of a couple inches from the ribs, and palms up. Track two, students, something a little juicier. Your upper arms are off to the sides, like 90 degrees from your shoulders, elbows bent, kind of like cactus arms. Back of your hands on the mat. Track three, student. Reach your arms long, biceps to the ears. Long arms, fingertips away from heels. Very juicy. Watching your your shoulders. If you're if you're in a track two or a track three, you notice tingling in your fingers. That's an indication to make a change. Maybe lower your arms. Maybe part way. Maybe all the way. Tingling is indication of nerve impingement. And if we stay there, well, we're going to do damage. And that's not nice. But if you're all right with it, just hang out. Come back to your breath. We'll broaden our our mindfulness of the body by going deeper into the awareness. There's an acronym. R N A. Well, we hear it talked about with cellular activity, R N A. And then just add an I to the end. R N A I. Find the sensation and where you're feeling it and let's Look at R, recognize. I'm recognizing and see sensation in my pelvis, my shoulders. I don't know where it's at, but recognize it. And then N, name it, give it a name. Is it compression? Shearing, torsion, stretching, name it. And then A, accept, allow. Just allow the sensation to be what it is. I feel a sensation in my hip. It is a stretching, warm sensation. I accept that and I allow it to be what it is. And this acceptance, this allowance brings us into I. Investigate it, investigate the rawness. 
by leaving it alone, not dicking with it, not cooking it, not messing with it. Leave it raw, experience it. My teacher, my guru who lives in the desert, he told me one time, we must experience our experiences if we're to get through them. Just allow it to be what it is. Just, just look at it. That sensation travels. Observe the path it takes. The investigation will use adjectives. Let's try to avoid bias and attachment. Let's just investigate for in the position of witness, observance. four more breaths, just, just a little bit longer. Linger here for a moment. Now, gently, if they're not already there, bring your arms down your sides, palms to the mat. Bending your knees and start bringing your, your feet flat against the mat. It's a little pressure into your feet. Lifts your, lifts your pelvis enough to remove whatever you had supporting it. And keep your knees bent. Lower, lower the back all the way to the mat. And just walk each foot out to the side of the mat. Right foot to the right side of the mat. Left foot to the left side of the mat. And let your knees come together. It's you know they call it TP. Just you know your legs and it make the shape of a TP. Hmm. Then, if you like, you can lift your knees, bring your feet off the mat. Maybe do a few circles with your knees. Maybe hug them. Maybe hug one at a time. Just some kind of natural, organic movement that feels sweet. And we're just looking for some rebound here. Just bringing the prana back into those areas that were just isolated. Now, in your own manner, however it is, let's keep it sweet and smooth. Come to your belly. We're going to begin a 
Sphinx pose. Just roll to your belly. And with your elbows out beyond your shoulders, begin with. Just bring your chest and shoulders up off the mat. Shoulders out forward towards the front of your mat a little bit. And just each hand grab opposite elbow. Take a moment to get into that. Find where there's some lengthening from your pubic bone to your solar plexus. They call it xiphoid process. Feel the curve settling into your low back. Track one, students. This is this is your place to hang out and indulge. If you like, you can bring your forearms parallel or, or hold elbows. Either way. Track two, track three. Come with me as you bring your elbows right under your shoulders. Chest is coming up a little higher, bringing a little more curve into the spine. Track two, this is this is where you would want to go ahead and hang out and be for a while. And track three, if you're looking for a little more juicy, a couple blocks right there in front of your chest. Bring your elbows up on those blocks. Notice you've got a couple different heights of blocks to choose from. I like the lowest one myself. When you get up on top, forearms, elbows on the blocks. Mm. It brings much more curve to the spine, a little more edge. You can drop your head, that's kind of nice. Forward. Well, if you're way up there, maybe you want to drop your head back and lengthen the throat. It's kind of up to you. You can roll your shoulders back, open the heart. Just let them be forward a little. Just whatever feels right. And maybe for even a little bit more, you can bend your knees. Bring your heels up towards your butt without clenching your glutes. Just let you let your butt be soft. Experiment with the width of your knees. Maybe they're together. Maybe not. It all just kind of depends on the shape of your, your hip. Recognize the sensation. Give it a name. Accept it, allow it. And just investigate it.
notice anything kind of starting to tremble and shake? It's all right, just let it do it. Hmm. How about maybe just like three or four more breaths here? Hmm. Track three students, you can remove your blocks, bring your forearms down to the mat. Now let's everybody just place your hands on the mat, one on the other, bring your chest down and drop your left cheek down to the back of your hands, a little pillow out of your hand. Draw your right knee up the side of your body like your inner right thigh is ooh, coming down to the mat. Just settle into this. Just flat down, everything down, cheek touching, chest touching, thighs touching the mat. Just neutralizing that back bend we were indulging in. You know, back bends are like nature Starbucks, man. They, they're energizing. And I noticed uh, maybe a feeling of excitement, like climax there, the peak of climax before the event, top of the roller coaster, car at 90 miles an hour, whatever. It's a, because you know, strong back bends were well, we're squeezing the kidneys, releasing adrenaline. You know, sometimes we we pump adrenaline over and over through our reaction to stress and experience renal depletion. So these back bends, you know, we squeeze the kidneys, bringing blood into them. And, Helping to offset some of that, that mileage we put on. And it's nice. It kind of feels good, right? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So let's go one more time with a back bend. Coming back to Sphinx. Remember, elbows out, out in front of shoulders. Just grabbing onto your, your elbows with each hand. There's your track one. You just go right back to where you were before. Track one, track two, elbows under shoulders, a little chest a little higher. Or track three, all up on some blocks, really just diving into that back bend. I'll pick what suits you. We're going to hang out in that for just, just a moment. Now, a little more, a little, a little treat to yourself, if it's appropriate. We can go to seal from here. So just rotating your elbows externally, bringing your palms out pointing towards the front corners of the mat, the room, walk them back, straighten your arms, really bring in your chest up. Just walking your hands back a little bit at a time. And if your glutes start clenching, just soften them like, like strawberry jelly, just soft. And just step by step, every moment, letting the curve settle in a little more. And if it becomes accessible after a few moments, bring your hands right in line with shoulders. 
fingers pointing off the side wall. And again, let your shoulders just go wherever they want. Maybe, maybe they're rolled back, maybe they're forward. It really doesn't matter where your shoulder's at. This is all about that spine curvature. Uh, and the kidneys, yeah. Now we can broaden our awareness from breath to body all the way to emotions. What emotions arise here? You know, they say we feel emotions. We feel those emotions in our anatomy, don't we? If you were up in seal and your arms have just had enough, Come back to Sphinx if you choose, or you can stay in steel. It's up to you. As we, as we recognize, name, allow, and investigate the emotional sensation, we can investigate emotional quality, huh? What's that about? Just a few more breaths here, maybe three breaths, maybe four. Oh, now again, place your hands down on the mat, one on the other. We're going to bring our right cheek down on the back of our hands. Mm, neutralize the curve we were just hanging out in. Draw your left knee up the side of your body, inner left thigh coming towards the planet. Mm. Wow, feel that washing sensation. A little achiness as we dipped into the coating of bones, a fascia, extracellular matrix. Now, all right, let's let's come up on our hands and knees. You know, a neutral tabletop here. We spent a few moments with the neutral spine, so I think it's appropriate to go back to flexion for a moment here. No cows, just just cats. Just exhale, rounding your back, kind of introducing your pubic bone to your breast bone, hip bones and elbows. Then inhale to neutral spine. Exhale, round your back to cat. Just a couple, you know, just, just take that through a few times of your own tempo, your own accord. Really tuck your, your pelvis, feel the low back lengthening across this, the flesh. Yeah, come neutral again. Ooh, it's kind of nice, right? Squeeze those kidneys for all that time. We just let them wash around. It's nice. A 
come back to your table. Bring your, your sit bones back to your heels, surrendering into the pose of the child, child's pose. You got a few options with child's pose. You can, you can reach your hands forward. That's nice. Or maybe, maybe bring your knees together and reach your arms down behind and wrap your palms around your heels and just, just oh, that might be nice. Letting your, your torso round over your thighs. Kind of think of it like like a pat of butter melting over a potato, right? Mm. While you're in your child's pose, it might be kind of nice to just gentle rocking left to right. Feel the bony bump below your knees, right at the top of your shins, tibial tuberosity, just kind of Feel the flesh as that bone rocks back and forth, side to side. Wow, what is that? That's kind of cool, huh? Oh, sweet. Dipping into the senses, it's sensual. Yeah. Nothing too hasty, but let's come to our backs. We'll kind of go through this last little series here. <clears throat> On your back, bend your knees and just let your heels come up close to your butt as you can. Feet are a little wide, almost width of your mat. Hands down at your sides, arms long. Without moving your feet, just let your next exhale drop your knees off to the right. It's like a windshield wiper, knees, both knees dropping to the right. Now, track one, students, listen up. Two and three, stay right like you are. But track one, bring your right foot up on your left outer thigh, left outer knee. And just hang out right here. Here's your place for a while. Track two and three with your left hand. See if you can take a hold of your left foot. And bring it right up to the outside of your left hip. Maybe you can release the top of your left foot to the mat while your heel is up by your left hip. It's like a half hero, half saddle. Track two, this is, this is kind of where to hang out. Track three, maybe you can bring your left heel a little higher. Or maybe it's where it's at. Go ahead and bring your right knee towards the ceiling and just hug it in. Now we're talking extra juicy, right? This deep dip into low back, hips, bring strong sensation. You know, strong physical sensation, maybe strong emotional sensation. This is where you apply your practice, you recognize it, you name it, accept it, investigate it.
And this is a pretty edgy area, very juicy, bound to give rise to, to louder thoughts. But we know that we're not our thoughts. They're just phenomena. We can observe them and watch them. Let them flow. Kind of like breath. Ram Das used to compare thoughts to clouds floating across the sky. I always kind of like that visualization. As we broadened our, <clears throat> our awareness, not only to breath, but the physical sensation, emotional sensation, seeing all of these in our body, you know, we begin to learn that emotions truly are just, just sensation. We can recognize them, name them, and allow them. Come back to where you were prior, you know, feet wide, heels at butt, knees bent, flat back. You have a couple options here. You can be very still and take a static rebound. Or you can kind of circle your knees, move a little bit for a more active rebound. And now let's line up for the for the other side. The, the feet are again kind of wide, heels close to butt. Without moving your feet, just exhale, letting your knees drop off to the left. Yeah. And for track one, you can place your, your left foot up on the outside of your right thigh, your right knee. Track two and three, you begin to bring your right foot up to the outside of your right hip, half hero, half saddle. It's kind of personal. Maybe you can release the top of your foot to the mat. You know, just like sitting up in Varasana, but we're on our back, our left knee off to the left. It's a little different. And for track three, now go ahead and bring your left knee to the ceiling hug it into your body. You just kind of notice how interesting that is, right? Having developed this, this understanding that emotions are only sensations and like thoughts, they can, they can just be observed. It gives us a very powerful tool. We, we, we can Except that pain is just a sensation. Pain is not suffering. Our suffering comes from our reaction. How we react. Knowing that gives us a very strong tool of observance, being the witness. Allows us to just experience our experience. 
perhaps foregoing avoiding apoplectic meltdowns, unnecessary sufferings. These unnecessary sufferings that always come with attachments. Attachments tend to extend things. And we learn that to let go, to surrender is truly, truly a very strong choice. And it's not a weakness, it's a strength. It's a benevolent strength. One more time, come back to feet flat and knees bent. You know, this time, bring your knees and your feet together. Give yourself a hug. Hug your knees to your body. You know, shoulders and head can stay on the mat. Just give yourself a hug. Allow any organic motion that feels necessary here circles or side to sides front to back just maybe ankle rotations toe wiggles just let it happen yeah. now with knees together at your chest arms wide just let your exhale drop both knees to the right Smooth inhale, bring your knees back up center. And a smooth exhale, let knees drop off to the left. Mm. Inhale, knees come center one more time. Maybe a little hug. And then exhale, just lengthen your legs and arms. Let the back side of your body melt. Corpse pose, shavasana. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, we're all one in the common energy we call love. It is my prayer that each of us can continue to feed and build benevolent qualities. We raise a fist, let the five fingers of that fist be humility, generosity, patience, tolerance, and forgiveness. I encourage you to stay right where you're at. Don't move. Stay with your breath. Be still. Five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. As long as you like, stay here. But our practice is officially closed.
I give you all my love and my gratitude. Namaste.